abundance. The mother and the daughter and the prosecution dropped every single sexual charge. I'm saying it again. The mother, the daughter, my accusers, in addition to the state, the prosecution, all agree they need to drop all of the sexual charges. So yeah, it's a victory, but it's bittersweet. It's a victory because I was facing life. No parole, no probation. Now you may say, how could this be possible if a minor was so-called molested and it was DNA evidence? And people say DNA don't lie. And I always said, people do. Well, let's do this. The serologist, the, the expert that so-called found six semen stains amongst a headscarf and a t-shirt. Never mind the fact, never mind the fact the whole rape kit said negative, negative, negative. They checked this girl for five different types of DNA, finger DNA, all types of different things. Checked her vagina, checked her mouth, checked her saliva, checked her excrement, checked her, her feces, checked her urine. Everything came up negative. You would think because of all the violent acts I was accused of, how I came inside of her, how I came on her face, how I bust her mouth open from penetrating her so physically, that there would be some kind of trace of something, some kind of DNA, but the rape kit came up all negative. So now we're in a conundrum. So how the hell do we got, how does the DNA just skip to a t-shirt and, and a headscarf? Well, the serologist that did the report that labeled it semen stains, when you got high powered attorneys such as myself, high powered attorneys such as myself, then what happens is when you spend damn near 200 grand on your defense, you have the right to do depositions. We have our own private investigator. We have our own, guess what, forensics expert. So our forensics expert said this. Our forensics expert said, we want to take a look and see what's going on over there. So when our forensics expert took a look and examined these so-called clothes with semen stains, we had some questions about how did you definitively conclude that that was semen in the first damn place. So guess what happens after that? A deposition is when we interview anybody that's part of the situation, whether it be the mother, the daughter, the people who took the 911 call, whoever. The prosecutor gets to sit in while we interview them, while there's a court appointed sonographer that types up everything and the prosecutor can hear everything as it goes so they can make a determining fact if they got a case or not. Point in case, we couldn't interview the serologist, Stephanie Thompson, because she mysteriously disappears when we wanna question her about how she came up with those results. I'll say it again. The person who said that there was semen stains on the headscarf and the shirt, despite the fact the rape kit tested for five different DNAs, considering the egregious acts that I was accused of, the rape kit came up all negative, which science would suggest I did absolutely none of the things that I was accused of. Science would suggest I did absolutely none of the things that I was accused of. Okay? All right? That's what science would suggest. Science would suggest that. But here's this woman talking about this DNA evidence. And then now when we call her so we can interview her, get a deposition and have it on record with my attorneys questioning them based on the findings of our forensic expert, she's no way to be fine. So you know what we could do now? We could file a motion to dismiss the DNA for the case. That's what we could do. Because if we go to trial, we won't be able to cross-examine her because suddenly she disappears. She works with some private company and no one could find her. Hmm? Now, all the while, the state been giving me opportunities to plead 20 years sexual offender, plead 15 years sexual offender. And I'm like, I wouldn't care if you gave me one day in prison. So long as you got that label registered sex offender on there, I'm going to trial. So long as you got that label there, registered sex offender, 
I'm going to trial because I can never make a plea to something like that. So guess what happens? The state says if we ever want to do interviews, depositions, if we ever want to get a deposition from the mother and a deposition from the daughter, all bets are off. They'll never do an agreement with me. They said they'll never do an agreement. Never do an agreement. Work out an agreement or a plea. I said, I don't give a, my attorneys to tell you straight up, because when you see my attorney video, he's going to tell you straight up. From day one, I said, I'm never doing an agreement to any sexual charges. Interview the mother and the daughter. So they are the last of our depositions. We got the police body camps. We realized that the police report contradicts the affidavit that they did. The affidavit contradicts the interviews that they did on the body cam. So we got three contradictions. The story that the mother and daughter tells on the body cam, the stories that they told in the police report, and the stories that they tell on the affidavits. None of them work out. And I'm going to speak about that. But ultimately, we want to interview them. So when we interview them and do our depositions, have the prosecutor sit there, we already know where they're lying. We already know their lies. We looked at every single, each of the three different types of lies they said for that night. So guess what's going to happen when we get to interview them? We're just going to ask them questions so they can contradict themselves. So when we go to court, we can ask them which story is true and why did you lie? So the prosecutor hits us again. Well, you know he's going to be facing life. We're in a week now where we got to interview the mother and daughter to get the deposition. So guess what happens two days before the mother and daughter supposed to fly into town for us to get the depositions? They call. After a week ago threatening me, two days before the mother and daughter supposed to fly out, they say, hey, we drop all the sexual charges. Huh? They say we're dropping all the sexual charges. And let me add something to this. Y'all heard this crazy story that I called a grown woman and asked if I could take her 14 year old girl to a party. And y'all believe that bullshit. But guess what my text messages say? My text messages say she asked me. Oh, hold on, let's, let's reverse. Do you know that we broke up that same day? And later that, within a day, within 24 hours, she filed a criminal complaint. Let's, let's add some more color to it. Do you know that the same day that I broke up with her, in my text messages, is proven she said she was going to destroy my life. She was going to fuck my whole shit up. So we have motive. Do you know that I wasn't the one that asked to take her daughter to a party after 2 a.m. in the morning? Do you know my text messages say she contacted me and asked me to take her daughter out to a party? After 2 a.m. in the morning, and I vehemently declined. I said, what the hell do I look like as a grown man taking a 14-year-old that obviously looks like a minor to a party? Y'all don't know that, though. All of this is in my text messages. Y'all don't know that, though. So you say, well, then, polite, then you should be clean. I should be, but unfortunately, the mother turned her daughter in. The daughter got high. And intoxicated and because I'm not the one that turned them in. Now we're dealing with child abuse and delinquency of a minor. If they could. So I'm like, let's fight it. Let's fight it. So my attorney's like, I just want you to understand. That this child abuse in Florida. Aggravated child abuse. From the child being intoxicated. They can give you 30 years in prison. I'm like, man, take the goddamn agreement. If, under what circumstances, if they can convince a jury that whether you gave her alcohol or you was aware that she was high at any point in time and you didn't turn her in, but since the mother did, you could be subject to 30 years. So I said, let's make a goddamn agreement, man. And let's work this thing out. So I still got to sit down somehow, some way. But it is what it is. Blessings in abundance is bittersweet. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And more information is going to come out and this shit is far from over for all the lies that was told on me. Peace.